It's time for Supply Chain Now. Broadcasting live from the supply chain capital of the country, Atlanta, Georgia. Heard around the world, Supply Chain Now spotlights the best in all things supply chain. The people, the technologies, the best practices, and the critical issues of the day. And now, here are your hosts. Hey, good afternoon. Scott Luton back with you here on Supply Chain Now. Welcome back to the show. We're uh, pleased to be continuing our coverage here in beautiful Scottsdale, Arizona, of the Demska Annual Conference. So if Demska, the Diverse Manufacturing Supply Chain Alliance, is not on your radar, it needs to be. You can check it out at dmsca.us. Um, before we get started with what promises to be a wonderful interview, um, we want to make sure you know, quick programming note, you can find our podcast wherever you get your podcast from. Be sure to subscribe so you don't miss anything, including our new subscriber love project we're putting out there. So stay tuned for that. Um, so let's welcome in a special co-host here today. Spe- everything's special about this episode. <laughs> we have got Mr. Paul Noble, founder and CEO at Verison. And you got to keep in mind, not only is, is um, uh, Verison a great partner for us and, and the sponsor of all of our programming here, but on a much more important note, they're out there um, fighting a good fight, leading AI-driven data harmonization uh, journeys for companies globally. Is that right, Paul? Yeah, very much. Fighting a good fight. Trained you well. He's yeah. got his, that's right. He's got his cape hidden right now, so <laughs> uh, more on that later. But um, before we dive into this uh, interview, Paul, what has been, you know, I like asking you to just kind of pick in your observations. That last interview was a fascinating one with yeah. Michelle. What's what's uh, a recent observation about your time here that that you, you're going to take home with you? Yeah, I think uh, the tightness of this group, the, the tight knit group here, um, big companies coming together, uh, the collaboration aspect is inspiring, and I think that there's uh, a lot of action. Right, there's mm. so much talk um, at some of these types of events, and I just I can see the passion, the action oriented mm. nature of the uh, of the event and and know that there's going to be some great takeaways kind of across the board and i and I'll tell you I've seen people huddling comparing notes uh solving the world's mm-hmm. problems and and of course i'm I'm kind of saying that a little bit tongue in cheek but kind of not kind of not they're, yeah, they're right. kind of figuring out no, some things really quickly some big topics going on here that's right it's action great. oriented um all right so uh, and real quick you can of course find more about Verison at verison dot com v e r u s e n dot com Okay, we have got a wonderful guest here today. We we enjoyed a uh, informal session at, at kind of the arrival party last night, and and, and had a chance to uh, talk with uh, Hannah Kane. Uh, so we know you're in for a treat. So Hannah is CEO at Alam. 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 I had written that down three times to make sure I get that right. Alam. <laughs> um, and <laughs> we'll do remedial training. That's yeah. right. Yeah. Please, yeah, I'll, yeah. I'll need it. Uh, Alam, A L O M. And she is a very lively industry thought leader. And uh, buckle your seatbelt. You're going to enjoy the next uh, 30 or 45 minutes with her. So, Hannah, good afternoon. Good afternoon, and thank you for having me, Scott. Great. Well, how could we not have you? After how much of the, we enjoyed the conversation last night, of course, you're so active, not just here at Dimska, but with groups like in it, the National Association for Manufacturers and other industry groups. You're very active on Twitter, which is one of our favorite social media channels. Uh, loved the picture with you and Supply Chain Queen Sherry Heinish last <laughs> night. That, that was, was so fun. neat. fun, yeah. Um, so welcome to Supply Chain Now. Thank you. Um, so... Let's get to know you, for starters. Before we talk shop, before we get to some of your industry uh, thought leadership, tell us who you are, Hannah, where you, you know, where you grew up, and give us a couple anecdotes on your upbringing. Oh, my God, that's a big ex- existentialistic <laughs> question, isn't it? <laughs> well, first of all, I want to say I'm excited to be here with Paul. I enjoy being with fellow mm. entrepreneurs. So um, well, my journey started in Denmark. I was born in Ud- Odense, Odense, okay. uh, in the center of Denmark. It, okay. That's a town where Hans Christian Andersen, the fairy tale author, was yeah. born, and I was born not too far t- far from his birthplace. Mm-hmm. I'm always saying that's why I make things up. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and um, uh, I enjoyed growing up in Denmark. Um, had uh, an exciting. Uh, 
uh, business career. Uh, I taught at Copenhagen Business School as an assistant professor at one point of time, but mainly I was out in uh, different manufacturing companies and uh, did some innovative work also in the financial services industry. And, uh, in, um, and I had a political career as well. So <laughs> really? That, yeah. So now that you, you got to at least elaborate a little bit when you say something like that. Was it locally? Was it yeah, I did, a, I did a number of different things. Uh, I ran some uh, uh, national and pan-European organizations, uh, and I uh, ran for parliament first time when I was 21 years old. And um, at one point of time, I was in briefly in the Danish parliament, uh, wow. and uh, I did some European activities as well. Um, so... Very, very uh, long story short, in uh, 1990, uh, I bought a one-way ticket and, uh, <laughs> and immigrated to the U.S. And uh, I was fortunate at the, that point of time I could actually get a, a work visa. I started working for a, a manufacturer on the East Coast. And in 94, uh, my husband and I immigrated to, uh, further west uh, to Silicon Valley. Silicon Valley. And that's where I've resided since 94. So why, um, why did y'all pick Silicon Valley? Oh, I think opportunity. It, it, you know, Silicon Valley is a very magical place. Um, mainly the business energy and the technology savvy and uh, Seeing it grow has been just fabulous. Uh, getting all the insights is still attracting some really bright folks that come up with new ideas. Mm. It's super entrepreneurial, so it's it's a really wonderful place mm. to be in. Of course, what happens is you get to know more people and it gets even more fun. Yeah. And especially when you're in supply chain, I've got to say, because supply chain, in my opinion, is won or lost on technology. Mm, yeah. right? mm. So having that deep technology understanding and the resources in Silicon Valley is fantastic. Mm. So in 97, I, uh, I quit my uh, gainful employment and I became an entrepreneur and uh, that's one of the best <laughs> moves in my, <laughs> in my life. <laughs> and um, uh, I started Elam and... Uh, we were a number of um, supply chain, and I say this loosely because supply chain was not really a concept right. in '97, right? Which supply is, chain engineers, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <a> back page <coughs> thing. Yeah, right. yeah, it was a much different yeah. Uh, yeah. definition at the time, right? And uh, we started out uh, doing supply chain for Silicon Valley companies, and we've grown it now. It's uh, 19 locations globally. I have a lot of frequent flyer miles, <laughs> uh, and those are the hard-earned ones. Uh, and um, we are very active in technology, medical, automotive, and uh, a number of regulated industries. So, uh, Paul, I know we were kind of talking about the Alon yeah. business model and exactly uh, some examples, yeah. right, of what it does, right? 19 locations. Congratulations, by the way. Yeah. Uh, sometimes it's good. Sometimes it's uh, <laughs> very busy. <laughs> so, well, give us uh, in, in in talking with you last night and some of the pre-show conversations as well. I know there's a lot of different things, a lot of different capabilities that Alam uh, has as a team. Give give us a couple examples of of some of the things y'all do. Yeah. So we. So when I founded Alam, it was the idea of excellence in the supply chain and being able to customize uh, the supply chain globally, uh, speed, uh, accuracy, uh, visibility. Uh, we were one of the first companies in 97 putting up uh, customer portals. Yeah. Uh, I think we might have been the first one, but I cannot document that for <laughs> sure. Um, but so w very technology-driven and... Um, yeah, going back to the first year in business, right? I was thinking about it. We did 55% of our revenue came from floppy disk duplication. Wow. And I'm telling, yeah. I'm telling that now in right. the audiences, and uh, half of the audience doesn't know what a floppy disk is. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's, <funny. laughs> that's kind of well, funny. So but we have evolved since then. So this is gonna it's <coughs> all about evolution. Yeah. Yes. This is, this is going to sound kind of crazy, but to your point, uh, kidding aside, you know, for some of our, our – Listeners that are still in college or they're, they're maybe just to get in the industry, a floppy disk 
was uh, well, I guess there's a couple different examples. You had the big, large ones. Yeah, mm-hmm. five right? and a quarter. Yeah, right, five and a quarter. That's right. And it was it was uh, rigid plastic, and inside the rigid plastic was a uh, magnetic uh, information disc that was uh, uh, kind of like vinyl. Yeah, uh, there we go. Yeah. Yeah. and and they would insert that disc, uh, unlike what they did years ago, which was a magnetic tape, right? Yeah. They'd insert the disc into the computer, whether it was five and, and, and uh, I said five and a quarter? Five and a quarter, uh, five, uh, five and a quarter, and then three and a half. Yep. Yeah. And then you get, the, you had the micro diskettes, right? Yeah, yeah. And that is what drove implemented software. It drove games. It, 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 yeah. um, and, and now all that's gone. What, what's the, the cloud, Right, uh, it's replaced yeah, all yeah. that. And well, a lot of the different things happened. There were not so much uh, built-in memory and computers at that point of time, etc. Mm-hmm. But it certainly opened my eyes for the uh, need to innovate, right? Uh, because if I had been sitting on my behind and just scoring uh, <laughs> on the floppy <laughs> disk duplication, yeah. and my prediction is I wouldn't have a lot of business That's right, right now. That's right, it should <laughs> be one location. <laughs> yeah. So um, instead what uh, we did was we kept evolving. So we went to doing the physical supply chain. So the physical supply chain means we do uh, inventory management, storage, we do configuration management of electronics, we do fulfillment, we do the reverse logistics. But we also do uh, the, f- the digital supply chain, meaning, uh, of course, visibility, which is a big, big uh, item, but also the entire traceability, uh, as well as the content in the supply chain. We do a lot of digital duplication, mm. etc. So again, related to the floppy disk, we do a lot of USB, SD card duplication, memory uploads, mm. configuration of mm. hardware. And finally, we do the f- financial supply chain that's related to all of this. Mm-hmm. And keeping it aligned is really wha- one of mm. the key areas we're working on all the time. And we do that within the framework of, work of corporate social responsibility. Why so is that? So why is that important to you? Corporate social mm-hmm. responsibility. CSR. Uh, well, uh, I think basically three things. It's really important to me personally. I'm very committed to leaving the planet a better place than I found it. Mm. Uh, And I'll do that on a micro level. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'll do that uh, to the best of my ability, what I can in Mm. my role. It's one of the things I enjoy about being a CEO is the impact I can have for good. Mm -hmm. Uh, The other one is uh, our customers really are looking for it. And the third one is the end users. Everybody's looking for yeah, people yeah. to do the right thing the right way for the right reasons. Yeah. Right? Be well, a good yeah. human. Right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and, and, you know, so it just makes simple. it more fun than uh, uh, having to sweep bad deeds under the rug, right? Yeah, yeah, I mean, yeah. that's just not me and mm-hmm. it's not my staff members. So, so it's kind of ingrained. So if I can, uh, yeah. Paul, speak, as CEO of a, of a technology firm and, and – uh, a growing company. Speak to that a little bit. What, what, what? Uh, when it comes to CSR and it, when it comes to you know making the industry better, making making the world a better place, how important is that to you? Ah, uh, very. I mean, it's uh, you know one of our key principles um, that we try to utilize internally as well as demonstrate um, with our customers or enable our customers mm-hmm. to do. Uh, you know, from a materials perspective. Um, it has a huge impact on sustainability and waste and um, what we try to, you know, uncover um, opportunities to have what you need when you need it, yeah. where you need it, and um, enabling organizations to learn how to do that better and more predictably, um, I think. Leaves Saving a, resources. Leaves, yeah, it leaves way, a right? huge impact on, uh, you know, uh, kind of a uh, – a domino effect, mm. so to speak. Mm. Um, so that's a big part of our um, evolving story as an organization is our ability to help support at least our part mm. of that. Yeah, mm. I, I feel the more responsibility mm-hmm. you have uh, yeah. uh, 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 and authority you have, the more responsibility you, you have to do the right mm. thing. Sure. But getting back to your question, Please, because yeah. I, 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 I realize I did the p- politician thing with not really answering your question <laughs> right, about an example of what know. we do. Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, so um, 
So a good example is a program we do for Ford Motor Company. If you uh, have a Ford Motor vehicle I and do. you want a new map for your vehicle, uh, you can go into a website. We actually designed this website. Okay. We are hosting this website. When you go in and you say, I want my new map, uh, you enter in your VIN number. We go in and we check with Ford in their database which vehicle you have and what you need. And we make sure that we then configure a USB yes. that we send to you so that you can use it in your vehicle. It's a right map for you. It's got the digital rights management. You cannot copy it and use it for another vehicle. We then say to you, here's what the, the cost is, depending on which agreement you have with Ford. And we send it out to you. And I think I've used your website for my Ford Transit van. You probably I did. think <laughs> I have. You probably did. And, and, and we probably processed your credit yeah. card. I won't double charge. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, uh, and if you decide you don't want it and you return it or you have problems installing it, you actually call us. So you, you, you think as an end user that you're doing business with Ford. It's all Ford printed, but on the back end, we are doing all the transactions. So you see that what we are doing is we have the physical supply chain. We have the digital supply chain where we are going mm. in and checking your rights and we are customizing the, the product to you. Uh, and the, f the financial supply chain where we are uh, charging your credit card. We are also doing the license management mm. and making sure that the people who created the maps mm. get paid. We are also reconciling over to Ford. So we are managing mm. the entire back end of this. And the, wow. and the security of all of that. Absolutely. So if you uh, ask me what's one of the key things that you're watching, Hannah, mm. I'd say cybersecurity mm. is uh, right at the top. And yeah. cybersecurity, not just as it relates to us, but in our entire supply chain. Mm. It's a very heavy uh, investment area for us. We, as I mentioned, we are very active in the in the automotive industry, but also in the medical industry. And uh, we certainly have some sensitive data, and I uh, don't want uh, anybody to be able to access them, right? right. right. Except the my staff who yeah, needs yeah, to, yeah. to do it. Uh, so, uh, so we run a very high level of cybersecurity, mm. and of course, it's driven by our desire to do the right thing and keep the data safe, but certainly also our contracts with our uh, customers are, uh, is very specific about that mm. this is a big area yeah. of concern, Correct. as it well should be. Yeah, yeah. 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 It, it should be and, and, and required to do so. Yeah. Mm. All right, so uh, I, we're going to pick your brain on other global trends or, or, or uh, news or developments that, that, uh, that you're tracking more than others, but before we do that, uh, now that we have a sense of what ALOM does, right? I get a sticker for that. Okay. Uh, <laughs> I got, um, where do you spend your time? As, uh, yeah, I think one of my favorite questions to ask CEOs is you know, everyone assumes where they spend their time, but it's so different. We've found it so different from, uh, from person to person. So where do you spend your time, number one, if that's 1A, and 1B is what are, what are your favorite aspects of where you spend your time? So I uh – I'm smiling as you're asking the question because I shared with some uh, fellow CEOs recently that I read an article that Howard Business Review put out about uh, uh, where to s uh, what do CEOs actually do. <laughs> 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 and I thought, well, that could be kind of interesting <laughs> to know what other people right. are doing. Sure. Yeah. So um, I'd say I spend a lot of time on, on, on company culture. Yeah. Company culture is really important to me. I believe that in the end, when all is said and done, the company culture is the uh, most valuable asset or the biggest li liability. Mm. And um, when I look at acquisition targets, etc., cetera, co co the culture is really top on my list. Very yeah. hard to do due diligence on, by the way. Yeah, yeah. Um, so I spend a lot of time on alignment to company culture, thinking about company culture, um, core values, uh, communicating core values. Um, I'd say that's probably my number one mm. area. Um, alignment, then communication and planning. Um, so if, if I can, 
Uh, and, and there's not, there may not be a one perfect answer because there's so many different things you can do to impact culture as a leader and CEO. But um, how have you found through through 19 locations now around the world? How have you found? Is there one best practice that you love to do each month or on, on a regular basis that helps pull that culture together and align it? Oh, definitely all hands, all hand meetings, okay. and and we are very so we are very information sharing throughout the uh, the company. Very important that everybody understands where we are going, um, and aligned around it. And so, yes, yeah, sharing information, um, we score really high on that. And I I, I measure employee engagement, so. Um, we just a month ago or so got our results from a third party um, um, survey that was done. And in Silicon Valley, we score 98% employee engagement. Nice. Wow. So the average, the average around in US companies is 30%. Wow. 30%, which wow. Uh, to me is how can you even do that? Abominable. Right? Yeah. But uh, so 98% of the employees come to work every day with the intention of giving their best that day. Mm -hmm. And that that's a huge focus for me. And as I said, I believe when you look at capabilities, the technology is really what, what drives the competitive advantage. But without that employee engagement mm -hmm. and that sense of ownership yeah. and uh, etc., you cannot drive anything. You cannot drive technology. You cannot drive alignment. You cannot drive customer satisfaction. Mm -hmm. So uh, so that's really important to me to continue that. Love that. I think it's wonderful. Yeah. So I'm going to... Paul, I'm going to put you on the spot again, Okay, if you don't mind. Greg Fair White enough. would... Yeah, I'm Greg, just like a sponge right That's here. right. I'm just <laughs> taking that's it all right. in. Greg White would be proud. Yeah. Um, so before we circle back and get some more of the trends that you're tracking, uh, Hannah, w when the topic of culture comes up, I mean, what are your thoughts on that? Yeah, so important. Um, agree with all the things that you've said, Hannah, and something that I focus a ton of my time on. Um, and our leadership team focuses a ton of time on it's a a topic at every meeting and um and every new hire and we're you know there's no time to set it we're an early stage company about 15 people now and um even at that level i mean the importance of setting that culture um to me is uh paramount mm -hmm. so uh it's something we work very hard on and will continue to um to maintain as as we grow mm -hmm. uh so you know with you know as a ceo you know, make sure we have vision, make sure we have culture, mm. make sure we um, have money to go. Right? <laughs> 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 well, Hannah, I liked how you put it about how you can have the best, basically you can have the best technology, but without those people coming in, 98%, which is a remarkable score, that are there, have a sense of mission, have a sense of team, um, you know, certainly uh, that shared alignment, that, that is a, that's part of the secret sauce in business success, for sure. Um, so before we move on, when you think about Alam, um, Alam, uh, what else makes it unique? What else are you proud of it that you've put your stamp on as, as the companies continue to grow? Um, uh, I think that the uh, staff attitude really important, but I also think capabilities, right? Uh, you know, top-notch staff. So when people start companies, uh, and I see entrepreneurs make this mistake all the time, they go, oh, I cannot afford somebody who's that good, right? Yeah. So they settle for somebody who's not that good, right? <laughs> and, uh, and then they decide that, that person is probably an idiot because they cannot figure it out, right? <laughs> <laughs> and, and I'm the only one who can do it right. right? And so they never grow the company. I've always, always believed in doing the opposite. I, 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 I want to have the very, very best people, people mm. who are smarter than me, who know more than me, who are just taking the ball and running with mm. it. And my job is to keep them aligned, mm. right? Right. But, right. But, but they need to be the best players uh, that, that, that you can get and, and, and really people you're proud of. So I think that that's the other parameter I'm looking at as, as uh, we're growing the team mm. globally is uh, always getting the best people. Mm. And that has allowed me to grow. It's also allowed me to do 
a lot of other things that uh, people don't think that CEOs can do, such as taking long vacations <laughs> and going <laughs> to Antarctica, <laughs> and, uh, you know, whatever, right? <laughs> Safaris and whatever, mm -hmm, uh, mm -hmm. right? Because my staff members really truly have it under control. Love it. I love the sense of no compromising that I hear, yeah. whether it's on culture or whether it's on building a team and, and, and some other things. I love that because uh, it, it comes across. I mean, it's like you um, uh, you can feel it. Yeah, it, it, Kind of some of our observations last night as we were enjoying some delicious food here at this resort. Yeah. Uh, kind of hearing no some wine, business right? stories. Yeah, no wine at all. <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> no, no wine was involved. Um, okay. So you've already mentioned about one of the trends that you're really focused on when you when you when you survey the global supply chain uh, in industry is cybersecurity. What else have you been tracking as as CEO of a of a, of a global organization? Uh, of course, uh, general technology, right? I mean, uh, as I said, uh, I believe uh, this uh, battle is won or lost on technology, and so uh, I think aligning business and technology let business drive technology but let technology elevate business mm -hmm. uh, so uh, we are looking at uh, both both uh, productivity improvements visibility improvements uh, predictive analysis uh, iot integration uh, facilitating data interchange different ways which is the about to release a mm. new tool uh, in that to make it very, very easy to integrate. Um, a number of different, uh, you know, we are investing heavily in technology. That's uh, our main focus as we are, we are growing the company. Love it. And uh, the other thing, uh, of course, I'm always looking at the global, global trends, right? So we are global, we actually... Uh, technically multinational because we've got entities different places and um, and I believe in global trade but I also believe in near sourcing I think we're going to see a trend with near sourcing now where we have had uh, some uh, trade uh, issues over the last couple of years and now uh, enhanced by the coronavirus. Mm. I think many uh, supply chain pros are going to sit back and say, maybe we should look more at near sourcing. So I, I, I feel that the tide is about to turn, mm. and I think it's a big opportunity for smaller and diverse suppliers to get into the supply chain mm -hmm. uh, and be, uh, have impact locally. Yeah. Or near near the markets, mm. and that mean that it's not just in the U.S., but it's wherever the markets are, right? So ninety six percent of the consumers are still outside the mm. U.S. We need to remember yeah. that. Right? Um, so that's another trend I'm following. I'm certainly following all the international, the compliance management. Compliance management is such an interesting area, right? Um, so when you, when you're speaking about compliance management, uh, give us a little context. What what, what what aspect of that are you involved in? Uh, me personally or well, the company? Well, <laughs> <laughs> so let me rephrase that. She's so hired <laughs> great people. Yeah. <laughs> so w when we talk about compliance management, are you talking about with your customers, with certain um, – uh, what does that mean for you? All of the above. Right? Okay. So, so uh, I think, you know, you look at it. Anytime you operate a facility, you have got compliance to local labor laws and other mm. laws – pertaining to that facility. Then you produce a product. Is that legal or illegal? You need to get it across borders and into different legal entities. How does that work and how do you do mm. that legally? Um, uh, wh where can you ship it? Where can it be used? Uh, and then, of course, there's the customer compliance, right? You know, wha what are the customer's requirements? Mostly you did mean across the board. I like so that. So it's, yeah. it, it's, <laughs> it's a really complex animal, right? And, and I mentioned the verticals we're in. One of the reasons we're not in even more verticals, because our services are really easy to transfer, but that's a compliance management. Mm -hmm. So especially when you look at the food industry, it's, it's very, very specialized compliance management. That's not something we do. Other industries, yes. Mm, right? yeah. mm. So... Uh, and then, of course, there's uh, entire uh, sustainability, which is part of the compliance management some, in some cases. And, and that's also 
built into our supply chain management how we we uh, handle that. So many times it becomes a contractual issue between us and our customers uh, where we are outlining very clearly who's responsible for what. Mm -hmm. We don't always know all the technology that's built into the product. Mm -hmm. So then we've got to rely on our customers to figure that out. Yeah. But yeah, you know, I, I enjoy the complexity in supply chain. I think it's a big barriers for any competitors to come <laughs> in <laughs> and yeah. it's fun for me right but um but certainly it also makes life interesting it mm. makes technology really uh, paramount it makes having really bright people who understand the different the depths of the issues really paramount and it makes ethics really important as mm. well yeah, absolutely that was a, you know, we we could have taken the last four minutes yeah. and and published that as a business lesson. Yeah, uh, you, you gave such a um, um, well-rounded definition of where compliance can can rear its uh, and and mess up the business, right? Yeah, uh, from the customer to from a geopolitical standpoint to a um, an industry or a sector standpoint. Certainly, when you when you when you're talking medical or or technology products, there's so many different levels and and dynamics to compliance so thank you for walking me through that i feel like i've gotten a business lesson yeah <laughs> no, this has been great and um yeah especially as we go more and more to a global economy and, mm. and it's it's going to be required you know to do that uh, what do you see as challenges as you're working with a lot of different companies you're you know running the supply chain what what is the challenge of fulfilling it to their customer expectations you, you know each of them have different levels of customer expectations and um, how do you manage that i mean other than just systems i mean there's a lot of other uh, elements built in there one of what i think one of the issues in corporate america today is risk aversity mm -hmm. and uh slow decisions yeah right? and and I feel the customer uh, induces uh, sentiment and the need in supply chain today is to make fairly fast decisions. Yeah. Um, not knee-jerk decisions, but, yeah. uh, but decisions that come in fairly short order. And, um, and I see corporate America having problems with that sometimes. Uh, it needs mm -hmm. to go fairly yeah. high up <laughs> in the organization before you get anybody who actually right, dare right. stick their neck out, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, and I see that as a main uh, obstacle to mm -hmm. maybe meeting customer expectations, mm -hmm. right? Sure. Um, and of course, many organizations are very siloed also with the decision making. Mm -hmm. So. Um, one of the things we do when we launch a new program for our customers is we go through the different departments and areas that maybe should be involved mm -hmm. that the uh, that the uh, yeah. stakeholders or business owners don't always think about that. Yep. Oh, maybe we should have asked legal <laughs> about this. Or You're like, trust or, us. Or, yeah, we yeah, should talk yeah. To them. Or yeah. how can we use your logo <laughs> and <laughs> you know all those type of yeah, things. So, yeah. so we have a long checklist we go through and sort of. Bring bring up discreetly during sure, <laughs> the, sure, sure. the process, but that yeah, sense. that uh, you know. Uh, it's, so Elam is a mid-sized player in the industry. I, I'm personally not thinking that large organizations add as much value mm -hmm. as uh, as small and mid-sized mm -hmm. players, just because yeah. I believe the world is need need companies and decisions that are nimble. Yeah. Uh, and I feel strongly uh, resourceful, nimble. Yep. It's one of the things we add. Yeah. Great point. Yeah, okay. So as we start to wind down the interview, would love to get you to weigh in on, uh, I know you, you're a regular at, at Demska events. Why are you here? What's the value? Well, in 1912, uh, Johnson and, uh, sorry, in 2012, okay. <laughs> okay, I'm not that old. <laughs> <laughs> in 2012, uh, Johnson and Johnson invited us to join Demska, and we went through the Demska program and went through the, um, the certification program. We got to the highest level you can uh, within that program, and um, uh it really uh, brought us a uh, different value, mm. both internally as we sort of took middle management through, uh, through a training process, 
but also uh, in terms of relationship with corporations and with fellow uh, uh, diverse suppliers. Mm. So I, I'm a big s- believer in diverse suppliers. We run really high uh, diverse supplier spend. We're probably one of the uh, companies uh, of the diverse companies with the highest diversity supplier spend. We do have contracts where we run 40, 50 percent, um, which is very hard when you do technology. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so we are very involved in the in this community and very excited to be here. Love it. Okay, so um, let's make sure our listeners know how they can learn more about ALOM. So where can, give us a URL, give us where, I know you're you're very uh, active on the associational circuit. How can folks connect with your company and connect with you? Well, we have, uh, of course, a website. Uh, It's uh, alom.com, A-L-O-M.com. Uh, and uh, we are very very active on social media, so both on uh, LinkedIn, Twitter, Facebook, um, and uh, you can also reach me. I'm uh, Hannah Kane at uh, on LinkedIn and at uh, Twitter. Uh, you may find me on Instagram as Supply Chain Hannah. <laughs> uh, so awesome. I'm passionate about supply chain. Yeah. So what can I say? I love yeah. it. Love it, and, and that passion comes right through. We if I had it. one quick question, I know sure. we're looking to wrap up, and it's fascinating to me because as an entrepreneur that was in supply chain management in the corporate world and kind of fell in love with supply chain early, see it as kind of, I always call it this, like honey hole of opportunity, right? And obviously saw that and started the business. Um, you did a lot of things, as you explained earlier in, in the show. What led you to make that jump and – choose supply chain as the place to do it mm. oh i was I, I i was involved in different supply chain activities mm-hmm. and really effectively worked with the what was at that time probably a competitor when i quit yeah. and started yeah. my own and i you know it was interesting because uh, as you well know the first uh, half year it's uh, it's uh, mm-hmm. it's it's you're you're in a totally different zone trying to make everything work and yep. create some structure and mm-hmm. funding and <laughs> you name it and um but very soon i felt that i had come home yeah. this was yeah. what i was meant to do mm. And I, I've been really excited about growing the company. It's changed my job functions also, yeah, yeah. and uh, give me great job satisfaction. And as I said, my biggest satisfaction in being a CEO is the impact I can have, the good I can do both for employees, for the greater community, for the planet, for a number of different things. I, I, mm-hmm. I really feel very gratified yeah. with mm. the, with what I can do. So yeah. I wish you I great s- luck in, uh, in growing that. your yeah. company. Yeah. Yeah. Outstanding. Outstanding. Hannah, uh, a pleasure just like we thought it would be. I uh, appreciate what you do and, and the passion and, and enthusiasm and leadership with uh, as it relates to your approach. So wish you continued success. We're going to have to have to have you back on as who knows by the time we talk with you, at this time next year, you might be in a hundred plus locations around the world. I, I, I'm not, the, you know, I value quality over quantity, yeah. right? So I don't think we're going to be growing so fast. But hey, well, we uh, there are different ways to grow, and I plan on keeping on them. Awesome, great, great. We've been chatting with Hannah Kane, CEO at Alom, uh, and you can learn more at alom.com, right? A L O M dot com, or across the social media stratosphere. Okay, Paul, what a great um, – the hits keep coming with yeah. interviews here, right? So many great leaders here. This has been awesome. Uh, so big thanks uh, for your time, Hannah, and your time, Paul. Uh, of course, thanks to the Verison team for uh, sponsoring our coverage here of the Demska event. Make sure – not only stay tuned for all of our uh, – the remainder of our interviews here throughout the event, but you can learn more about Demska at dmsca.us. Um, separate from that, you can check out some of the things we've got coming up at Supply Chain Now. We've got in-person events. We've got uh, global digital events, uh, a variety of partners from EFT Reuters events to the Automotive Industry Action Group, Resilience 360, and Modex, for that matter. Uh, if you can't find something you're looking for on our events tab or our webinar tab at SupplyChainNowRadio.com, shoot a note to our CMO, Amanda, at SupplyChainNowRadio.com, and we will get you hooked up. Uh, big thanks once again. Uh, to Hannah and to Paul 
Uh, stay tuned as we continue our coverage of the conference here, the Dimska Conference here in beautiful Scottsdale, Arizona. Uh, Scott Luton here on behalf of our entire, entire team. Have a wonderful week ahead, and we will see you next time on Spotcha Now. Thanks, everybody.